Hey everyone, this is Reverend DeAndra Averhart. It is Thursday, August 18, 2022. It is 11.09 a.m. This is lecture four in the learning series, Rags to Riches, Transmuting a Poverty Consciousness. This is brought to you by the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, an educational component of Tia Deshay, LLC. Legal disclaimer, this entire PowerPoint course of the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies is copyrighted 2015 to 2022 by the Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies, LLC and Tia Deshay, LLC. All rights reserved. This PowerPoint course may not be copied or duplicated in whole or part by any means without express prior agreement in writing with the owner and creator or unless specifically noted on this presentation. Some photographs or documents contained in this PowerPoint presentation course may be the copyrighted property of others. Acknowledgement of those copyrights is hereby given. Our agenda for today's class. Vision, mission, rationale, and motto statements, scripture, cultural trailblazer, course intentions, lecture, references, and completion. The vision statement for Sela Leadership Academy for Creative and Intuitive Studies is as follows. To change, challenge, and heal generations, our mission statement is to create a learning space where people know, recognize, and understand that the tools and resources needed to change, challenge, and heal themselves already exist within. The rationale, people, specifically melanated people of the African diaspora, want to be given the permission to exercise the right to change themselves. And our motto here is that learning starts within. Our scripture and affirmation for today's class. Our scripture, a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. This is Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter and the 19th verse taken from the King James Bible. The question is, are you going to like the answer that money gives? But I thought this was an interesting verse that's found in the Bible. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter and the 19th verse, taken from the King James Bible. The question is, are you going to like the answer that you receive from money? That's for you to answer. God knows my real needs and supplies them. That is the affirmation for today. God knows my real needs and supplies them. That's why it is important to turn over our will to the creator's will, to surrender to the creator's will. Because while we think we know why we need the money, the creator knows our real needs. Because a lot of times we may say we need this amount of money in order to, to be happy or secure when in reality, that's not the case at all. And so God, the creator supplies the real need. That's why we may not get the dollar amount that we are intending to manifest. Because we think if we get that dollar amount, then it will provide us with X, Y, and Z. But in reality, it's an emotion that we want. It's a feeling that we want that's tied to that, to that dollar amount. And you may very well receive that emotion, that feeling through another means. It may not necessarily be through that dollar amount. So when we surrender our our will to God's will, to the most high will, to the creator's will, and we connect to the infinite mind and we receive the answer that the infinite mind wants for us, then we are supplied with our real need, not the illusion that we think we need, but the real need that will turn out to be way more satisfying than what we thought in our mortal minds that we needed. Our affirmation 
is taken from the spiritual mind power affirmations practical mystical and spiritual inspiration applied to your life book uh, by dr paul leon masters and you can find this book on amazon our cultural trailblazer for today is elizabeth keckley Elizabeth Keckley was a dressmaker, businesswoman, and author. She designed First Lady Lincoln's inaugural gown. It is on display at Smithsonian's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. This was taken from the book Wealthy Blacks Before the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863, written by Kimberly Jones. Our intentions for today's class the intent for this course is to examine poverty physically and metaphysically. The intent for this course is to dismantle, sever, and transmute the energy of poverty on an individual scale. All right, six types of poverty. The first type of poverty is spiritual poverty. Now, where I gathered my information for this particular class, the author is a Christian. So... His concept of spiritual poverty was not being saved, not receiving the gift of salvation. And that may be true for those of you who, who adhere to the Christian uh, religion. That if a person is not saved and has not received the gift of salvation and acknowledge Jesus, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior who died on the cross for them and their sins, then they are spiritually in poverty that no matter what they do in life they will always feel empty until they have this conversion until they have this salvation experience another way to look at spiritual poverty is not being connected to your ancestors not honoring the people that came before you because they are very much alive they're just in a different dimension not recognizing them, not wanting to know who they are, not wanting to know their names, um, not honoring them, not remembering them, not consulting them on an everyday basis. That is an example of spiritual poverty when you are not connected to anything outside of yourself. All right. Let me let me rephrase that. When you're not connected to the true, to the source within yourself, that everything is physical with you. Everything is physical. You don't acknowledge that there are people helping you on every level, on every dimension, on every plane of existence. There are spirit beings helping you. Even atheists acknowledges the power within. Even if they don't attribute it to a God or a, sp uh, a spirit being or someone on their spirit team, they acknowledge that they have the ability to tap within to get things done. But not, but just totally living a life of carnality. Just everything is, I'm going to do what makes my flesh feel good. And I don't care what, how it affects other people, what it does to other people. It's all about me, 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 me. And I did this because of me. And not acknowledging the universal laws. Not, not acknowledging... Um, that there were people who, whether you understand how they came into your life or not, but there were people who came into your life and helped you along the path. That is a form of poverty. When you are just so disconnected to your spirit. When you're disconnected to your spirit, you're, di you're disconnected from the God within. From the infinite mind. When you're so focused on everything outside of yourself. That is spiritual poverty. Poverty. That everything that you see distracts you. Everything that you see triggers an emotion. You're not grounded in any way, shape, or form. 
you're triggered by everything you see you hear you touch you taste anything can get you off off the path number two mental poverty poverty of ideas understanding insight and wisdom You can't get a you can't receive an idea to save your life, literally. Um, you lack the ability to discern. You take whatever people say at, at face value, whatever you hear on the news, whatever conversation you have with a significant other or um, a family member, a colleague, co-worker, um, somebody randomly at the grocery store, a neighbor, you just believe it. There's no type of wisdom to higher level thinking, no type of wisdom to guide you into thinking on a higher level because you're mentally poor. There's no critical thinking going on. There's no wisdom. There's no discernment. There's no researching it for yourself. There's no going within to find a deeper meaning it's just you just everything is surface with you everything that someone tells you it has to be true number three physical poverty lack of good health and general well-being always depressed always anxious always stressful um, or always stressed rather, um, always distracted, always nervous, always paranoid, never at peace. Mind is just racing a thousand words a minute. Thoughts just, you just can't seem to focus on one thing. Therefore, you don't complete projects. You know, your body, you're just always tired and fatigued. Now, obviously, I'm not here to diagnose. I'm not a medical, a professional medical pra uh, practitioner. I'm not discounting any illness that you may experience. Go see a medical professional, both mental and physical. However, know when what what this is saying is that. Pay attention to how your body responds to, to certain situations or when you feel certain emotions. Like I said, don't discount physical symptoms. Go see your doctor. Go see a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a counselor. But at the same time, are you just always in a constant state of depression, darkness? Where is it coming from? what's triggering it is it really is it really health is it really mental health or are you choosing this because you like the attention that you get from it you like the drama that you get from it your life seems boring if you don't have something to complain about your life seems boring if there's not drama your life seems boring if everything is going fine are you creating these environments or these situations where you're stressed deliberately so you can get attention are you just always on the go always on the go always on the go never stopping to rest because you don't want to deal with whatever and so now you're causing these physical complications in your body or you, or these mental complications in your mind number four financial poverty what we most of us associate poverty with but as you can see is more than one way more than one way to be poor financial poverty poverty this happens when your life is characterized by lack of money and material resources 
You gotta rob Peter to pay Paul. Um, you gotta you gotta get over on people. Another way that poverty shows itself financially, and I had this experience, is when you nickel and dime things. Like I buy all these little small things. Because in my mind, the price, the price is what I can comprehend. Oh, I can afford that. That's nothing. Instead of just purchasing one large item, a one item that costs more up front, that I'm paying that amount anyway when I buy all these little small things, just buy the one item, pay the large amount, and be done with it. That's a, that's a poverty mindset, and that was me. Because I could comprehend spending 20, 30, 50, 60, 100 dollars, but I couldn't comprehend spending two thousand dollars on one item. That's a poverty mindset. Knowing that that item would have would have been way more beneficial, it would have given me what I wanted, space-saving organization all in one place, one-stop shop, but looking at the amount of it, that's a poverty mindset. And then when I look back on it, I'm like, I spent almost half of what this one item costs, just all this nickel and diamond stuff. That's the poverty mindset, going the cheap route. Because you're so busy wanting to impress people. Oh, I can do that. I'm about to show them I can do that. And not realizing it's still going to give the energy of cheap. Your intentions will always show through. I tell people that all the time. Your intentions for something will always show through. Always. No matter how you try to lip gloss it up, uh, clean it up, designer label it up, your intentions will always show through. Energy is energy. And those who have the ability to see beyond the physical facade, they can see right through it. Being cheap, instead of just paying the money, investing in the money, or investing in the product, or what you really want, just paying for it. I see that a lot um, here in Detroit, where I currently reside, where people um, you know, buy houses. And they go the cheap route of repairing the house and rehabbing the house or doing home improvements. They go the cheap route. Fix it just for right now. But then a month later, you know, or a couple of months later, maybe even you might get a year out of it. You're going to have to come back and, and fix it again. And there's no guarantee at that time you're going to have the money to do it. Because remember, this is poverty here. You got a poverty mindset. And if you haven't been working on that mindset, it's no guarantee that when this same issue gives you a problem again or shows its face again, you're going to have the money to deal with it. So, so just pay for quality up front. And then you can get longevity out of it, especially out of a house, especially if you know you're going to be in this house for a while. If you know you have no plans of moving of moving no time soon, we're talking about you gonna live in this home for at least five to 10 years. Why not invest and do it right? Pay a contractor. Do it right. And, and and sacrifice the time and energy to pay for it. If you have to work extra hours, then do that. But the benefit of it pays off. 
that's that poverty mindset, that financial poverty mindset. That's one type of poverty, just doing the cheap, you know, doing things, finding the cheap way out. Do it up front. And if you got to sacrifice on, on the short end for something long term, then do it. Number five, this have uh, results poverty. This happens when you have no results. You are poor in terms of success, accomplishments, etc. You have not achieved much. You don't have you don't have what to point to, laurels or accomplishments to show for your life and efforts. You know how many people leave this planet every single day and they die in result poverty. They have nothing to show for their life. They don't have a book. They don't have a creative project, something that they built, that they created. Um, nothing. Nothing. They got a bunch of clothes that's somebody else's creation, a bunch of shoes. Everything they have is somebody else's creation. But they don't have anything to say, look, this is what I did. This is what I accomplished. For most people, they might have a high school diploma. I'm not knocking that because for some people, it took a lot for them just to graduate from high school. But that's it. You never wanted anything else. You never wanted to learn anything more in life. Some people don't even have a journal. A journal is an accomplishment. To sit and discipline yourself to write in a journal every day, that's an accomplishment. People, some people have nothing. They leave nothing. Nothing to say, I accomplished this. No house that's paid off, that they own. No degrees, no certifications nothing it's like they just live their life spending their time money and resources on other people's creations but they never thought to create anything for themselves to leave for other people to leave behind for others that's why it's so important to have a relationship with your spirit team, connect with your spirit team, because you are the one or the generations that are alive in that bloodline, they're looking to us to bring these ideas into fruition and to leave it behind. They're looking for us because now that they have transitioned and they're in another dimension, they realize that it's a lot of things that they wanted to do and they didn't do it. So now that's why they talk to us in our dreams. That's why we get messages about ideas that, you know, we, we're we looking like, I, you know, where is this coming from? For instance, with me, I always wanted to be a teacher and I fulfilled that that assignment, that goal of being a teacher. I would have never thought that I'm doing what I'm doing. I, I would have never thought that I that um, I can heal people energetically. I never thought that I could uh, receive answers and change circumstances through candle magic. I never thought that I could um, use the water element by making soaps and bath salts and oils and things like that to heal people. I never thought that. But because I developed a relationship with my spirit team and my ancestors, obviously that's in my bloodline. And for whatever reason, while they were on this physical realm, they were distracted or situations happened to them or they didn't have the level of knowledge that I have to for them to fulfill their desires. And so now it's coming through me. I didn't think I would, you know, I always wanted to be an author but here I am six books later. All of that is because I connected to my spirit team. I connected to the infinite mind. 
And those ideas have always been in my lineage and I'm bringing them to, to the forefront. Because my ancestors die in poverty and result poverty. And I'm here to change that. And I have changed it. That that particular aspect of poverty is no longer on my bloodline. I've broken that. Start thinking about it. What is it? You have some results and some accomplishments in your life. You know, don't keep going through life and you have nothing to show, nothing to, to leave behind for the next generation. That you created, that you created, not something that somebody else created, you created. The last type of poverty is social poverty, a state where you are poor in terms of relationships, meaningful value adding and relevant relationships all of your relationships it's just you take 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 or they take from you you don't feel fulfilled in the relationships there's no reciprocity when people think about you like they really they really know that you added value to their life they can't deny it. I don't care how the relationship ended. They cannot deny that you added value to their life. That you was a real one. That you were, that you did things for them that probably their family would never do for them, has never done for them. A complete stranger. That's what this is addressing. This is what this is referring to. If you don't have those type of relationships, then social poverty, you're in social poverty. Where all your relationships, people just take from you. They just use you. They just manipulate. Every time you're in that person's presence, you know, you just feel drained. Nothing positive. It's just what can you get from them? If people, when they think about you, you know, they turn up their face and it's just like, it's just every time I call them, it's just drama. They're not doing nothing with their life, you know, nothing productive. Um, they always, you know, just bragging about how other people doing for them and they ain't got to do nothing. You know, people don't respect that. Because if you don't, if someone's always doing for you and you're in a position where you, you don't quote unquote have to work or whatever, that means you have a lot of time on your hands. So why aren't you giving to society in a positive and productive way, in a fruitful way? So it's just a, it's just a bragging point for you. Oh, I ain't got to do nothing. My baby daddy got me. My man got me. My husband got me. Okay, well, use that time that where you quote unquote don't have to work and contribute something to the world. Contribute something to other people's lives that, that is positive and productive. Not just use it as, oh, I ain't hurting for nothing. I'm good over here. I ain't missing no meals. Because somebody else is picking up the tab or you're picking up the slack. That means that you can go out and be productive. Get involved in your child's school. You know, be a pa parent volunteer. Do something productive. Get involved in your community. But just to sit and waste time, you know, on the phone and, and Netflix and, and watching movies all day, like, that's not productive. Read a book, go to the library, go explore your community, get out there. But if you have relationships and you realize you're giving more than what you're getting, 
or every time you're with that person and you walk away you feel drained um they only call you when they need something or they only call you to gossip and talk about people then you're in social poverty and it's time to reevaluate how to get up out of that situation for instance i can say like i didn't realize how much of an impact I had on people and um, you know as a teacher yeah okay you you yeah okay you know you get students to say yeah you changed my life and it, to me that's part of the territory it's kind of like when I became a teacher that's what I was supposed to do you know I wasn't doing anything out the ordinary but then as I started teaching or the longer I started teaching I realized like dang everybody don't think like me like everybody didn't get into did not get into teaching thinking and that's what you're supposed to do like a lot of people don't even realize the impact they're having on people as a teacher so I kind of sort of started you know really valuing my impact on people but it really didn't hit me or my impact on students as I was teaching. Cause then I started looking at my colleagues. The longer I started teaching, I started looking at my colleagues like, y'all really don't understand the impact that you have on these students' lives. You know, by behaving the way in which you're doing, by half-assing, not teaching, you know, just coming in for a paycheck. Like I started to see how impactful I was and I started to, like become more vocal with my students like you know and with administration and with parents just with everybody like you don't realize who you have in front of you they don't make teachers like me no more like you really don't i'm the last of the mohicans you really don't understand who you have in front of you and you're not gonna understand it until i'm gone or until much later in life like it took me a while to just vocalize that but I had to see that everybody didn't have the same mindset as I did in education about, no, this is what we're supposed to do. We're, we're with somebody's child eight hours out the day, probably with their child more than they are. And what we do and say, it matters. It's, it's, it extremely matters that there are people out here literally homeless because of what a teacher told them. You know, so I started to see it the, the longer I started teaching, but it really hit me when a couple weeks ago, um, I was invited, a coworker of mine at the last school that I worked at before I resigned, a coworker of mine, she received her doctorate degree and she um, invited me to a brunch to celebrate. And I was like, so excited, I was so, so excited. So happy for her, you know, but really really happy like how she did it how she made her moves like i was like yeah that's what's up how, you know um and i went to the brunch and she was telling us she thanked everybody that came because um her she did her dissertation on it takes a village that it takes a village when we're talking about educating our youth that it's just not on a teacher it's everybody it takes a village and she was saying how she was you know thanking us for coming and she was saying you all are my village like you all in some way shape or form helped me get to where i am now and so this this brunch is not only to celebrate my accomplishment of getting my doctorate degree but it's to celebrate you all for being that village for me and I mean I just lost it like I was bawling like a baby because I did not know like I had that impact on her because mind you um at that school I started there in um September of 2019 and we were on the same team we were both on the same ninth grade team and um you know we clicked and we were working together boom boom and then COVID hit so in march of 2020 everything went everything went virtual like we shut down they closed the schools everything so i only really 
interacted with her in person from September to March. That's like six months. And it's really not six months because because give and take, we had vacations, we had Christmas break, we had Thanksgiving break, but about six months, we interacted physical face-to-face -face in school. Then um, we went online, we went online. And then in September of 2020, you know, everything was shut down. Like at, we all, everybody was doing, you know, virtual education all across the country. So I wasn't interacting with her physically. Yes, we were interacting on the phone through Zoom, um, not through Zoom, we were doing uh, Microsoft Teams. You know, we were interacting that way, but we didn't physically see each other. And then I ended up resigning in March of 2021. So um, I didn't even work with her. I worked with her for what, a year? For about maybe um, a year and a half, we worked together. And so for me, for her to tell me that, like for her to tell me, she was like, you the only one, you know, I invited from, you know, the school that we worked at together. She was like, you the only one I invited. And I was like, wow, like that really just, like, I just didn't know, like I didn't realize. And all I was literally being was myself. You know, it was days I was coming into that school, you know, with a really messed up attitude because I was stressed. I really didn't like being there. Um, just a lot was going on in my life at home and then work. And, you know, in my mind, I was not being the best version of myself. But the fact that I made that impact on her, whatever I said to her or how I interacted with her or helped her, like it impacted her to the point that she was like, no, I want you to be here celebrating my accomplishments. So that's, you know, an example of social poverty. That's what I'm trying to say. Are you having that type of impact on people so much that they remember it? Like I hadn't talked to her in a long time. Like the last time I had talked to her before I received news that she had got her doctorate, um, it had been a while. It had been months. Like, so when I received the text, like, you know, you're invited, I was like, wow. So that's what I mean about what kind of impact are you having on people? You know, are people coming back to say thank you? Or when they cross your path, they are just so excited to see you. Or when things get tough in their life, for some reason they calling you, and they saying, you know what? You was a real one. You was a real one. Like I didn't realize it until I had to go do X, Y, and Z until I'm going through this, but you was a real one. You not having them kind of conversations. It's time for you to evaluate, are you suffering or are you in social poverty? All right, here are some solutions. I don't believe in, you know, I did, this is the final class for this learning series. I don't believe in telling you all of this and just like, oh, well, you in poverty, can you go figure it out? How, how to get yourself out of poverty? No, solution based over here. We're gonna come up with solutions. Now that you know the, the, the attributes of poverty, what who and what poverty is, the types of poverty, um, how do you know you're in poverty, what poverty looks like. Here are some, here are some solutions. One, do a 30-day challenge. I'm doing a 30-day challenge right now. I'm on the 18th day. Every day I get a tea light candle, I cleanse it, and I speak a prayer into it that um, is dissolving and transmuting poverty in my life. I speak an affirmation into it, into the candle. I speak some scriptures into the candle, and then I let the candle burn. So I'm using the air element, which is my voice, and then I'm using the fire element to help transmute the spirit of poverty in my life. You can do a 30-day challenge. For 30 days, you pray. For 30 days, you pray against the spirit of poverty. 
You can do a 30 day challenge where you uh, you listen to every day. You listen to a message to help change your mindset. It can, you can find it on YouTube or whatever. You listen to a message to help change your mindset from poverty to prosperity. Do it for 30 days straight. You say an affirmation every single day for 30 days straight to help change your mindset from poverty consciousness to prosperity consciousness. Do a 30 day challenge and see how it, it does and see how it doesn't or see how it does transform your life. You won't be the same. Consistently do it. And if you miss a day, start all over again until you do it for 30 consecutive days. Another solution is do a tarot reading. Do a tarot reading for yourself or you can go to someone and ask the question, where are there areas of poverty in my life? Help me to identify the areas of poverty in my life. Do a tarot reading. Get a tarot reading done. And then once the areas are identified, then ask, okay, what solutions can I take? What can I do to help transmute this energy? Take a spiritual bath. Research different herbs and oils that help uh, raise your money vibration. Do it on certain days. If you're trying to get rid of poverty, do it during a waning moon. Because waning moon is releasing. Um, do spiritual baths. Use different herbs and oils to help release poverty thinking, lack and limitation. Use different herbs and oils that help elevate your uh, prosperity thinking, help elevate your prosperity um, consciousness. For your 30-day challenge, you can do a playlist. Make a playlist of songs that make you feel good about money and play that playlist every day for 30 days. Um, spiritual bathing, I already talked about that. Past life reading or regression. See if your poverty is connected to a past life. And you can do that through a past life reading or a past life regression. And then see how that's playing up in your present day reality. Cord cutting, you can do a cord cutting uh, ceremony. Um, you can do it with candles. That, that's a popular thing now where you put two candles together and connect the um, cord to it, the string to it. You can do it that way. Do what feels, be intuitively led for all of the solutions that I'm giving you. Be intuitively led. But you can do a cord cutting ceremony, cutting, severing the cords of poverty that's connected to you. But remember, when you do a cord cutting ceremony, you must stand in your authority. You must stand in that. Don't waver because you're cutting the cords. So until you're ready to completely go through with it, don't cut the cords because the cords may mean that you got to cut some relationships with people that keep you in a poverty mindset. So until you know you are ready to cut those cords and not go back, uh, take your time with cord cutting ceremonies. Candle magic. You can do candle magic. Get green color candles to raise your money vibration. Get black candles to banish poverty thinking and a poverty mindset. Get a white candle to attract um, ideas, uh, money making ideas, or just to clear your mind, clear your energy so that you are receptive to to divine minds ideas for prospering you could do a purple candle to help you elevate yourself uh spiritually the crown chakra so you can be more connected to your intuition and to god the mind of god candle magic is a way all right clean your house a lot of stagnant energy is in homes when you don't clean your house um get rid of things that'll help clear up any poverty that's lingering in the home, any poverty energy, any po poverty entities, any thoughts of poverty, clean your house. 
sage it, Florida water, do a special um, wash for your floors and your walls um, on the outside of the house to, to bring in prosperity, bring in fresh energy, new ideas, new opportunities, new relationships. Dream work before you go to bed. You can ask your subconscious, reveal to me the areas in my life where, there, where poverty exists. And then pay attention to your dreams. Write it down. Meditation. Meditate every day. Meditate every day. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting much better at it. Like start meditating every day. I don't care if it's for five or ten minutes. Do it until you feel comfortable, until your body knows that this is a habit, that this is just what we do. And then once the body and the mind knows that this is a habit, this is what we do, then you can increase the time. Meditation will help you identify where poverty exists in your life. You can uh, engage in Reiki or energy healing. Move that energy in the body. Move that energy, that root chakra energy, that sacral chakra en energy, that uh, solar plexus energy. Move it. Heart energy, heart chakra. Move that energy. Have a funeral. Have a funeral where, where poverty is dying in your life. I did that for myself. It wasn't with poverty. It was with something else, uh, which means it worked because I don't even remember what it was. I'm going to have to go back to my book of spells to see what it was. But I held a um, funeral for something that I wanted to die in my life. Um, and I wrote the eulogy out and everything. And um, I said the eulogy and i bought a box and i buried it like have a funeral where poverty is now dead in your life so these are some these are some solutions to help you transmute the poverty consciousness in your life here are the references that i used for this class lecture four a um, complete deliverance from the spirit of poverty is an article that's available on the internet here is the url address it is by the uh, article was written by dr olusala coker and remember i mentioned this earlier in the class that this he is christian so it's a christian based article i didn't cover everything that's in the article that is why um, one of the reasons why I'm mentioning it is for you to go back and read it for yourself. I also include references because I don't believe in plagiarism. I'm going to tell you where I got the information from. And uh, Kimberly Jones, if you want to know more about wealthy blacks before the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863, read Kimberly Jones's book. I suggest you get the book and give it to your children, give it to youth. Um, Include it in a social studies class, in a history class, so that um, our youth can know, especially our black youth can know that all of us were not slaves, that we were out here making money. We was out here, get, you know, <laughs> as they say, chasing the bag. We, we, were, we, were, we were getting money out here. All of us were not enslaved and oppressed. And many of the people in the book bought their freedom. They made enough money where they were able to buy their freedom. Goes back to the scripture that we had today for this class, that money answers all things. In that particular case, money was an answer to their bondage and their oppression. They bought their freedom. All right, so if you want to know more about wealthy blacks before the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863, you can purchase this book off of Amazon. It's written by Kimberly Jones, and it was written in 2020. All right, here are my resources. If you would like to take any of my courses, I have three co courses currently on Udemy under Reverend Deandra Everhart. You are more than welcome to do so. Um, I'm here to tell you that those courses are like amazing. I just surprised myself. Um, you are getting a lot of valuable information, more information than what um, the cost of the class is. 
Um, I believe all of my classes have some type of bonus material where you get extra beyond what you're paying for. So if you're interested in any one of my courses on Udemy, I'm under Reverend Deandra Averhart. Um, obviously, you know about my YouTube channel because this is how you took this course, this learning series. Um, I'm on YouTube, Mere Moments with Tia Deshay. Other videos that I have on YouTube are just our channel messages, any messages that I receive from Spirit that I am instructed to put on my YouTube platform, I do so. Um, I have six books. I'm an author of six books. They are available on Amazon. Just type in Tia Deshay in the search box and you'll find it. And um, if you like to donate, give, support um, me in, in a financial way, you are more than welcome to do so through PayPal, Tia Deshay at Yahoo.com. As you can see, I have source codes. They will take you to my website. They will also take you to my app and other resources that I have. I have you... You can connect with me no matter where you are financially, whether you want a personal service, reading with me, if you want me to come in and do consulting with you and your business, if you want spiritual healing, uh, I mean, if you want yeah, spiritual healing, energy healing, if you want bath products to help you to take spiritual baths, um, healing through the water element. Um I have all types of ways in which you can utilize my, my um, products and my services just to help you change, challenge, and heal generations. I help you through candle magic, through the water element, through bath salts, through soaps, um, through oils to help you dress your candles. I do readings. I do energy healing. I'm just here. I'm here to be of service to help people. Clear up that energy. Get that energy going. Clear up the energy. Transmute that energy so that we can live better lives. We can live more productive lives. That's what I'm here for. I, I change, challenge, and heal generations through a variety of modalities. Through lectures, through classes, through courses, through books, through candle magic, through bath products, through oils. That is how I change, challenge, and heal generations. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> um, just thank you. You have reached the end of this series. It was only four classes. Congratulations that you took the time to, to go and take all four classes. I know you learned something. Use your intuition as to what you will implement in your life. Don't take anything I say. You know, as the end all be all, you do your research and do what feels right and comfortable for you. I'm just here to plant the seed and to get you thinking and to help you on your path and your journey. So thank you so much for taking this course. I'm immensely grateful. I am so thankful. Until next time, stay blessed and be aware.